Welcome to Uncover, the show dedicated to exploring what we need to know about God, the enemy, and ourselves to win the war for our destiny. Your host, Dr. Peggy Karlosky, psychologist, writer, and speaker, admits that there's no new truth, only that that hasn't been uncovered. And now, here's your host. Hello and welcome to Uncover. Thank you so much for joining me. I've been talking with you um, for a couple of weeks now about practicing life and practicing indicating that there are some things that we're going to have to just keep working on until we get out of here. Things that we won't have to uh, probably address and work at when we're in heaven because God's perfect will will be done there and we will be completely who we are called to be. I know this week there's been several times the word tainted would keep coming up in my mind as I would be working with people or thinking about things. And what I thought about that was that that's another reason why we have to practice living effectively is because we've all been tainted from the fall of mankind, humankind, that we can have some struggles that we won't have in heaven. And that today I was thinking about, you know, um, in practicing life effectively, one of the main things we've got to think about about is living life intentionally, living life as if we mean it. And we got to look at that from God's perspective. And I know I was just reading in the Word, and I came across where the Lord was talking about watching and, and living as if you're watching for His coming. And I was reading in Luke, and it's the... the um, the 21st chapter and verse 34, and it just kind of jumped out at me. I'm going to read it to you. But take heed to yourselves, lest your hearts be weighed down. What does it mean, weighed down? It says, with carousing, drunkenness, and cares of this life, and that the day come upon you, come on you unexpectedly. It was talking about, you know, we can get caught up in life and not only the things that how we feel and trying to have a good time, but also the cares of this life. That the day of the Lord, the day of when Christ comes back, sneaks upon us and we've not even been focusing on what's really going to matter. And that got me thinking about whenever I used to teach at a couple of universities, one of the courses I loved teaching was Theories of Personality. And over and over we'd see in there that some of the theorists would say people develop early in life what they think is important and how, what do we strive for? And we've talked about this different times. Um, I've talked about it on my radio, uh, on this radio show, but we might strive for fun, power, significance, and so forth. But you know, the Lord talks about, and it kind of is a guiding force in our life, but we can look back at our life someday and go, what? did I really aim for? Did I live intentionally by what's important? And that got me thinking when I was reading this verse that, wow, we could be living and not even thinking about Christ coming back. Not just our own death, but that he's coming back. And that we can get weighed down with the cares of this world. Or things that aren't necessarily bad, but that become too important and take too much of our attention so that we neglect other areas that are even more important. I think that's an ongoing issue that we have to keep practicing about. I know I do, like get my focus back, get things in perspective. In fact, it, in, in looking at this, I thought about other scripture where the Lord's trying to tell us, remember what's important, remember what's important. And I think about in Matthew we read Matthew 6, 33, very well-known scripture. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added to you. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about its own things. Sufficient for the day is its own trouble. And I think about this, and I think about what he's saying is, do we seek first the main things? I want to tell you about something that happened this morning that it may sound really um, strange to you and like I'm just 
jumping to conclusions that aren't accurate, but I still want to share it with you. I uh, recently went on a cruise and I didn't want to take um, my credit card with me because I just didn't want to worry about being stolen or anything and I wasn't going to use it. So I left it. I thought, well, I'm not going to take it with me. I'm going to put it up and, and not take it. Well, I needed the credit card this morning. Well, actually, I needed it a couple of days ago just because I wanted to put it back in my wallet, know where it was at. And I don't use it very often, but there uh, was something I needed to pay online, and they say it's safer to use a credit card. And I could not find the card. I thought, well, where have I put it? And I knew I'd put it up to not take it with me. I'm sure some of you listening have done some of the same stuff before. Put something up to hide it, and then you couldn't remember where you put it. I searched and searched all the normal places I would put something like that. I searched in our, you know, lockbox. I searched in certain places where I'd put important things to keep it. Nowhere to be found. And, of course, I had looked in my, I have a little um, pouch that I keep my license and my debit card and my insurance card. Not very many, but my, my Kroger, you know, discount card. Well, I knew, I thought, well, it's not in there because, you know, I would I was not going to take it. But I still took every, I would took the whole pile of cards out, although there wasn't very many, and go through one at a time and look at it, look at it. Of course it wasn't in there. I searched and searched. I'd keep praying, God, help me find that credit card. I finally told my daughter, I said, and I ended up paying the other online a different way, but this morning I started again could not find it. And I told my daughter, I said, I guess I'm just going to have to cancel it. She says, well, mom, you know, it's here if you didn't take it with you. But by that point, I thought, I don't know, you know, after menopause, you can get a little flaky. And so I thought maybe I took it and didn't realize it. I didn't know what else to do. And I'd asked the Lord several times. Well, this morning I kept feeling, you know, the nudge of spend some time with me in prayer. I, I, I knew that I'd not really spent some one-on-one -on -one time with the Lord the way I felt drawn to. But I was so busy trying to find this credit card and doing other things. And so anyway, I just thought, you know what? I'm going to stop all this that I'm trying to do. I was trying to get ready for a trip this weekend. I was trying to get ready for this radio show. I was trying to find that credit card, definitely trying to find that credit card. And I thought, just forget all of that. I just went in the living room. And I found a, I had just recently bought this really cool armchair and I thought, hey, it's such a neat design to it to pray at. It just looked like a neat little prayer bench. And I bent down and I knelt at that and I just started talking to the Lord. I started talking to him about helping me and my family love him more. I started saying, help us want to please you. I started praying about some people I was concerned about. I started telling the Lord to forgive me for some of my attitude. I just started talking to him about things that I felt drawn to talk to him about. I started telling him about concern and just, just spending some time with him and praying about some things. And somewhere along the line in that, I said, God, would you also just help me find that credit card? And I went on and was finished praying. I was praying about this radio show and asking him, Lord, you, I just want you to speak to me what you want people to hear. What do you want them to hear? And help them to send listeners that need to hear it and help them hear it. I know that I'm not the one that's powerful, but whatever God wants to speak is what's powerful and truthful. And I just spent some time with him, and I got up, and I thought, well, okay, I'm going to go look in my, look, where's it, where am I supposed to look at? And I thought, it's kind of as an afterthought, because I, I didn't know, and I, I thought, go look in that little pack, uh, pouch again that has my cards. And I thought, well, that's stupid. I've took each one out hand by one by one. Doesn't even have that many cards in it. Why would it be in there? I didn't want to take it with me. And it was like, well, just look at it again. I thought, it can't be in there because I didn't, I've already taken each one out three or four times, hand by hand. I just thought, do it again. I went over there. It almost freaked me out. I unzipped it, took the cards out, almost the second or third one, there it was. And I thought, God, I, I know it wasn't there. I hand did them one by one. Now, whether God just supernaturally put it there or whether God let me just not be able to see it because he was teaching me something. Isn't it ironic that what he led me to this morning is seek first the kingdom of heaven. 
Seek first the kingdom of heaven, and all these things shall be added unto you. Don't get caught up in the cares of this world that you don't keep in mind what's really important. Christ is coming. People aren't ready. And I know in my prayers this morning, what I felt drawn to is to pray for the harvest. There's so many people, not only hurting, but that are blinded. And I thought, wow, Lord, whether that card was there and you just made my eyes where I couldn't see it, even though I hand took one by one, either way, God was showing me something, whether he just put it there or whether he didn't even let me see it, even as I handled each one, that ministered to me. He was illustrating to me, seek first the kingdom. How many of us do that? Even if it's things that aren't necessarily bad that we're doing, but do we seek first the kingdom? Do we put in perspective what's really important? There's things that we're wanting God to do in our life, in our marriages, in our workplace, in our finances. In fact, I was talking to someone recently that I really care about, but I could tell. I said, you know what? The things that you're asking God, it's almost still, it's all about you first. Do you say, God, what do you want? What do you feel? And I thought, wow, don't we all do that sometimes? We get, we're supposed to love ourselves, but we get caught up in thinking about, God, what I, what I want you to do for me. I want you to help me find my credit card. I want you to make me happy. I want you to do this and that. And I thought about when I started saying, Lord, what do you want? Help me love you more. Help me do things that I know matter to you. One of the things I was praying for, help me to want to please you more than myself. And I need to keep asking that and asking that and asking that. That's what I shared with my friend. Ask God to help you to want to please him more than yourself. And you know what I found when I do that? God wants to bless me. I went immediately there and found that card that had just so distressed me from the night before to today. And I went, wow, God, you want to work in our lives. But you said this for a reason in Matthew. Seek first the kingdom of God and all these things will be added unto us. I hope that that speaks to you because I know I need those reminders. Sometimes I I was talking to one of my clients that is very precious to me. And she may be listening right now. And if so, you'll know who you are. And she was sharing with me how much that she appreciated my radio show. And I told her, I said, wow, you don't know how much that's helped me. Because sometimes I think I just keep repeating myself. And I keep, sometimes I'm rambling. And and I realize, though, I do ask God, what do you want me to share? And she said, no, no, I don't feel that way. And I thought about it, and I told her, I said, it's partly because I sometimes repeat some of the same things over and over that God has laid on my heart, like how temporary this life is, or like today, do we seek Him first? Do we really seek Him? Or, And I thought, thank you for that reminder, Lord, that maybe people are like me. I need to be reminded over and over and over when I'm getting too caught up in things that don't really matter, or things that matter, but i got to seek Him first, or getting caught up in the cares of this world. When that one jumped out at me when I was reading it, what are the cares that are on you right now? Maybe you've got some worries and some things that are, are, are really plaguing you. I really recognize, in my little example this morning, the Lord wants to help us. Do we trust Him? And I realized when I got on my knees and just spent some time with Him, He wants us to seek Him, not just for what He'll do for us. Because, see, that's one of the things that goes on. He didn't want us to just seek Him for what He'll do for us. And I read about Peter in the Bible. You know, and I think about Peter's story where Peter wanted God to come back. He wanted Jesus to be king and take over and have this big thing. But what Peter came to learn is do you love God even when He's not doing it the way you want Him to? That's a different kind of way of seeking the kingdom. Seeking, loving him, just because what he's already done and who he is. And when we do that, it's amazing how things fall into place. Doesn't mean that we always get everything the way we want want it to be done. But he will move and work in us in some ways that will blow our mind. That may have seemed like a little silly example to you this morning. But initially, it just blew my mind. I thought, God, what? 
How could I have missed it? I hand took each one of those. Maybe he blinded me for a moment, so I get the point. Seek first the kingdom of heaven. Try to think about what's really important. And then the cares of these world he'll help us with. Some of you out there may have some heavy, heavy concerns. Much more important than finding a lost credit card. I just speak to your hearts right now and say, please, seek first the kingdom. Seek the Lord. Get to know him. Ask him to help you to love him and to want to please him. And you'll be amazed at how much he pleases you. How much he wants to be there for you and help you with your concerns. And yes, we've all got to keep practicing. There's struggles here that we will not have in heaven. Just like how people hurt each other. We hurt each other's feelings. People disappoint us. I disappoint myself. But we won't have to worry about that in heaven. But here, it's going to happen. People are going to hurt you. You're going to be disappointed. There's going to be things happen that it shouldn't happen that way. Things that are not fair. That's just not fair. And sometimes with people that you wouldn't even expect it from. But you know what? If we remind ourselves, seek Him. Seek the kingdom of heaven. It'll help us in dealing with some of those things here that disappoint us. Because we'll be reminded in His kingdom, that won't happen. People won't hurt each other because we will be fully in the image He created us to be. I just want to encourage you with that. He loves us. He wants to help us. And those passages, I was asking the Lord, Lord, help me not only read what you want me to read, but God, help me understand it and really get what you're trying to get to me. And this morning, I really think he reminded me again, he's so precious, how much when we do it his way, it works. Sometimes I try to do it my way. I spent all this time trying to find my credit card, or you may be trying to fix some problem with your family. Why don't we do it the way he tells us to? I just encourage you with these words. Lord, I thank you right now for what you showed me even this morning, a reminder. God, we need to be reminded over and over. I know I do. I pray for these listeners that you'll encourage them. Lord, that you'll speak to their hearts, that you'll just draw all of us to seek first the kingdom of heaven to really talk to you, Lord, and, and know you and do it the way your word tells us to. I pray for those listening that you'll help them with their cares, Lord, their concerns. You are a caring father, and sometimes we lose sight of that. I praise you and honor you, and I thank you that you want to speak to us. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you for listening, and I look forward to next week on Uncover.